Hey everybody! If you are trying to sell your house quickly and get the best feedback, you're going to want to watch this video. Hey everyone, I'm Lindy. And I'm Russell. We are from Love Create Celebrate, where we help you love, create, and celebrate your homes. As many of you watching our channel know, we have our house up for sale. Yes, and it's been a bunch of work to get here, but we are excited for the new things to come. It's been on the market for about a week. It's not sold yet in this market, but we have had a ton of really good feedback. Basically, everybody's saying the house is beautiful. It shows really nicely. You know, no negative feedback about the house yeah. itself, just things that are out of our control. Like layout, which we can't change. So if you want that kind of feedback, that's what's gonna help you sell your house the quickest. And we are gonna go through the 20 things that we did to prep our house and get it ready to sell as quickly as possible. Lindy also made a really great checklist and you can find a link for that in the description to help you get your house ready to sell. We wanna say thanks to Dab Canada for sponsoring this video and sending us some products to help get our house ready to list. So let's jump into those 20 things. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is deep clean. And I know that sounds obvious, but I'm talking about more than just vacuuming and washing floors. I'm talking about dusting all of the surfaces you don't usually dust, you know, above every art piece, above every mirror, washing every doorknob, washing every light switch, just making sure that everything looks fresh and clean because I can guarantee you those little things stick in people's minds when they're walking through your houses at open houses. And one person says it and they all listen. So deep clean your house. We have kids and we have dogs and we do renos, so our deep clean was deep. <laughs> one of the items that should be on your list is walls. So this includes things like taking photos down, which is kind of depersonalizing the home. Um, and then if you are taking photos down, you're gonna likely have nails or screw holes that you're gonna have to patch. You can also use DAF's patch kit for some of those bigger holes. It works really quick and you just do a couple coats of paint and it makes those holes disappear. We'll include a link to show you how that patch kit works up above. And then finally, make sure you're cleaning those walls to give it a nice clean and fresh look. Speaking of walls, if you have any walls that are beyond just a quick wipe and clean down, you might need to consider painting them, which is our third suggestion. Painting any walls that need repainting, possible ceilings, anywhere there might have been wall or ceiling damage, can really freshen up a home and make it look like a brand new space. Also, you can consider painting interior doors or any painted cabinets that you have just to keep everything looking fresh. And that brings us on to baseboards and trim. I think it always looks really good when you have fresh baseboards. And I mean, baseboards are kind of meant to get hit and nicked, but when they are hit and damaged, they don't look very good. So we did have a bunch of spaces in our home where we did a refresh on our baseboards. If you have any caulking that is cracked, you can use Dab's Alex Flex or Extreme Stretch to fill in any of those gaps. Um, you can also, again, use their spackling to patch some of those holes if you have any. And if you need to replace your baseboards like we did a few weeks ago, we have a whole video on that, so you can check that out linked up top. For a majority of this video, you're gonna hear me say decluttering a lot because decluttering is such a huge part of getting your house to sell which brings me to this next topic, which is your closets. This can be linen closets, entry closets, bedroom closets. You need to declutter those spaces so that they are 50% empty. You don't want to forget about decor closets. Well, <laughs> we don't all have one of those. <laughs> but I did empty that so it was 50% empty too. So we're talking about going through all of those spaces and packing away items, purging or donating things that you're no longer using or haven't touched in the last year. But make sure there's a lot of empty space in all of those closets so that people coming into your home can envision all of their stuff in your spaces. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a bit of a play with the mind. You're trying to make it look like it's empty, but it actually makes it look like you could put more stuff in there. <laughs> 
50% guys, 50% empty. Normally you're going for 100%, but in this case, 50% <laughs> is okay. It's an A plus. <laughs> and then that brings us to countertops. And the whole theme again is decluttering. So we used to have our mixer, toaster, knife block, utensil holder, all that on our countertop, but we got all that hidden or put away and it makes your counters feel a lot more open and more usable space. And then this is also going to give you a chance to see if you have any cracks along the caulking on your counters. And again, DAP has some great products like their Silicone Ultra and it comes in various colors. In our case, we used white and black to recaulk some of our countertop where it meets tile or the wall. And then speaking of surfaces, our next area to declutter is any of your cabinets or shelves or vanities, any of the surfaces in your home. Just like countertops, we just want them totally decluttered. And even honestly, the top couple drawers, because you know people are coming into your house and snooping and pulling those drawers open. So make sure that they are organized and decluttered. Take as much as you can off of cabinets and floating shelves to make them look really spacious and open. And if you can remove some of those extra cabinets, we definitely removed some furniture from our house to make it feel more open. And I would strongly recommend doing that if you can. Yeah, agreed. The next point is cleaning your kitchen cabinets and appliances. So we made sure like the oven went through the clean cycle. We wiped down any of the appliance legs and faces. We have stainless steel appliances. So we use a stainless steel cleaner just to give it that nice shine. We also clean cupboard doors and inside the cupboards to make sure we got rid of any dust or grime or grease or food particles. So just everything looked clean and fresh and it actually really refreshed our kitchen and gave it a yeah. really good look. Um, and we decluttered some of those cabinets yeah. too, so same theme everywhere. We had things that we hadn't touched since we moved and therefore they didn't get to come back to the house. <laughs> and piggybacking off of that, you also want to make sure to clean out your fridge, freezer and pantry. I'm talking about going through all of the food, donating stuff that is still good that you're not eating or haven't eaten purging anything that's expired. I can tell you doing those two things will probably declutter those spaces quite a bit already. And if you have an open pantry space like we do, try to take everything off the floor because it just makes it look so much more open. And in your fridge and freezer, take all the food out and wipe everything down. People are always gonna snoop in your fridge and you want those shelves and everything to look like new. In our home, we have a couple of different areas where we have storage because um, of the hip roof shape. We have these storage areas and behind the bedrooms upstairs and these really turned into a catch-all. Um, so we went through all these areas, we decluttered and purged, um, we got rid of a bunch of stuff and we wanted to make sure that these areas looked big and open so we got rid of any items or bins lying around on the floor. And that goes for like your utility room, that storage space in your basement or your shed. I know that some of those spaces are gonna be needed to store the stuff you're decluttering from everywhere else, but where possible, leave as much of that storage open because storage is one of the biggest things people look for when they're buying new homes. The next thing on our list is linens. Make sure all of your linens are laundered or freshened up take curtains down and clean them or replace them if they're past the point of being cleaned like a couple of ours were. We bought some really cheap Ikea curtains and put them up to replace other curtains and it's a cheap solution to make it look fresh. Wash all of your bedding. I mean, I know we're all washing bedding <laughs> regularly. Wash bedding. We don't worry, we wash bedding. Yeah. But if your bedding is gross, consider getting some new bedding and putting something fresh on your bed or a quilt over top so that they don't walk in your bedroom and that's the comment they make. You want the comment to be about the space and not about your personal choices. Also, freshen up linens in bathrooms and kitchens. Before showings, we go around and switch them out for fresh ones to make sure that everything is nice. There are towels in the house I'm not allowed to use. <laughs> They are showing towels. Yeah. Decor <laughs> towels. <laughs> Next item to look at is carpets and rugs. So we don't actually have any carpet in our house, but we do have a lot of area rugs and they get dirty. We have kids, animals. Um, so you want to look at the type of rug because that's going to decide how you clean them. So 
For instance, we have a rug in our living room, it's wool, that needs to be specially cleaned and sent out. We have some area rugs that are just cotton, um, those can just be pressure washed. So I put them outside, hung them up, pressure washed them, let them dry, put them back in the house, good as new. So just make sure they all look fresh. If you have a rug with a big stain on it that doesn't come out, you might want to switch it out. You just want everything to look fresh and clean. And if you have carpet throughout your whole floor or in a large area, you can rent carpet cleaners fairly cheaply or you can pay someone to come in and professionally clean those carpets for you. Yep. The next item is lighting. Take some time to go around your home and clean those light fixtures. On the top where dust collects, anywhere, if you have glass fixtures, make sure to give them a wipe down and a wash and make sure that all of your bulbs are working because that's another thing everybody notices because all the lights are in your house all the time. So the next one is filters and this maybe isn't as important for the showing phase but it is for when you get house inspections. So we went through our whole house and our house was simple because we only had two. We had the furnace filter and we have a filter from our well that I switched out. But if you have any other water systems or heating or cooling systems that require filters, I would recommend just switching them out so that they're clean and good to go and it's not gonna be an item that's brought up as a cause for concern. And the last interior suggestion we have is fixing any minor repairs you have around the house. This could be a leaky faucet that you haven't addressed for a while. It could be a door that jams or a drawer that jams or a door that squeaks, <laughs> any of those things. Just quickly go around the house, knock a few of those things off in an afternoon. In our house, we had some doors on the main level that had seen better days. They all pretty much had dicks and scratches in them. So we just went ahead and replaced those doors and at the same time replaced all the knobs and hardware so that it matched all of the doors upstairs, kept everything really cohesive. That was a quick update we could do that just helped the house show really nicely. We're about halfway through our suggestions, but I just wanted to remind everyone to subscribe to our channel. There's a lot of really exciting content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed, turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on our next adventure. Do it. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna move outside and we're gonna look at windows and doors. So. Um, again, it's all about first impressions. So if people walk up and your glass is all grimy and greasy, dirt and debris on it, it's not going to show well. So we went around and we cleaned all our windows inside and out. We also made sure all our screens were good and had them installed. We also took this chance just to look around our windows. We had painted our house last year um, and there was a couple spots that we wanted to add caulking to. So we used DAP's Dynaflex 230, which is also great because it comes in a bunch of colors and because we have a black house, we used their black caulking, which required minimal painting afterwards. So we caulked any of the areas where we had cracks against our window sills and gave it a fresh coat of paint and it looked like brand new. And speaking of doors, your front door in the front of your house is people's first impression when they come. So you really want to make sure that curb appeal is on point. That can mean actually painting your door to totally refresh it, adding planters, adding some fresh plants. If you have a mailbox on the wall, consider cleaning that off and getting rid of cobwebs on your front porch or putting out a new welcome mat, anything that's going to freshen the space and make it look really inviting to the people driving up to your house. We're gonna continue outside and we're gonna get all our surfaces cleaned. So if you have concrete walkways, concrete patios, decking, you're gonna to wanna to pressure wash these just to clean them up, remove any dust, dirt, debris, footprints from kids with muddy boots, that kind of thing. You also patio furniture cushions, make sure there's no hair from your pets because our cats like sitting on them. Um, just everything clean and fresh. And garage doors, if you have garage doors, they can also be cleaned easily. Yeah. For a better first impression. The pressure washer is a great tool for cleaning outdoor things. The next suggestion is to get on top of your landscaping. If you're selling in the summer or when grass grows, make sure that you are mowing those lawns, weed eating all of the hard to mow areas and just keeping everything looking short and easy to maintain. If you have garden beds, take the weeds out, maybe throw some fresh mulch down if you mulch your gardens. And if you have any toys or other things outside, both kids toys and adult toys, 
find a space for them or put them all together so it's decluttered and again, looks really spacious and open. We also had a gravel driveway because um, we live on an acreage, so we made sure that it got graded. We had a neighbor who had a grader just to give it a nice, it's all about those first impressions, right? So we got rid of any ruts or potholes to give a nice smooth entry into the home. And onto the next item, which is house maintenance. So this is items like weather stripping, if you need to replace around doors or windows, if you have any outdoor light bulbs on shops or sensor lights or patio lights, um, windows with cracks or chips, you want to get those switched out. And then if you live on an acreage like us, you're going to have items like a well or septic tank that you're going to want to look at getting either serviced, flushed or pumped. And then finally gutters, you're going to want to make sure that they're clean, no debris in them so that everything is functioning like it should. And window wells if you have them, which yeah. we don't. But just any of those outdoor minor repairs or house maintenance items. You don't want people to come to the house and say, oh, I'm going to have to deal with this, this, and this. You want it to say, hey, these guys take care of their house, and that's probably a representation of what they've done with the whole house and everything in it. So hopefully you found that list of pre-listing items to do helpful, entertaining if you're just watching for fun, or helpful if you're actually planning it to move. If we missed anything or you think of anything that we didn't cover, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget that there is a listing and checklist you can download on our site. We will leave the link in the description box if you want to check that out. Thanks so much for watching.